Good morning. We now call this council meeting to order. We do ask if you have a cell phone at this time, if you would put it on silent, mute, or off. Be greatly appreciated. This time we'll be led in prayer by Madam Clerk, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Madam Clerk. Oh, God of might, wisdom, and justice, through whom authority is rightly administered, laws enacted and judgment decreed, assist us, we beseech thee, that this city council may be conducted in righteousness and be eminently useful to thy people over whom we reside. Reside, I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with justice for all. Madam Clerk. Counters Williams. Here. Morgan. Present. West. Present. Mayor Kirkland. Present. Move for the approval of the minutes. So moved. A second. Are there any questions? Madam Clerk. Counters Williams. Yes. Morgan. Yes. West. Yes. Mayor Kirkland. Yes. At this time, we open up the microphone for public comments on agenda items only. If you have public comments on the agenda items, we ask that you would uh, go to the podium, state your name and your comments, concern. Hearing and seeing none, Madam Clerk. Resolution, whereas the following individuals have requested a handicapped parking zone. Number one, Brenda Gibson, 1130 Clover Lane, Chester, PA, 19013. Number two, Charles Johnson. 325 East 20th Street, Chester, PA, 19013. Number three, Diana McDaniel, 3015 West 9th Street, Chester, PA, 19013. Number four, Diana Mobley, 20 East 16th Street, Chester, PA, 19013. And number five, Gabdale Pizarro, 915 Hyatt Street, Chester, PA, 19013. Whereas after a thorough investigation by the Department of Public Works, it has been determined the aforementioned individuals have met all of the required criteria and have a need for said handicap parking zone. Now, therefore, the Council of the City of Chester does resolve that it does hereby authorize the proper city officials to install a handicap parking zone in the 1100 block of Clover Lane, in the 300 block of East 20th Street, in the 3000 block of West 9th Street, in the unit block of East 16th Street, and in the 900 block of Hyatt Street in the city of Chester. So moved. I second. Are there any questions? Madam Clerk. Councilors Williams. Yes. Morgan. Yes. West. Yes. Mayor Kirkland. Yes. Resolution. The Council of the City of Chester does resolve that it does hereby authorize the proper city official to prepare the advertisement of notice, accepting application for the associate project manager position within the city of Chester. Further, that it does hereby authorize the city clerk and other city officials to advertise said notice in the help wanted section of the Delaware County Daily Times, the designated employment boards, and to post said notice on the city of Chester website. So moved. Second. Any questions? I have one. I'm not exactly sure of this position, and I apologize. I wasn't at deliberative on Monday. Is there any insight on it? Which, which second? The, what about what about it? Any? Could you, Chief? Uh, please. Lighten. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. <clears throat> My apologies. I, it's, I think it was just added on um, just yesterday. It shouldn't have been. Actually, I wanted to push it to the next meeting. But what it is is the part-time position that we discussed with uh, Ms. Dixon, staying on to help out with some of the final projects that she's working on. And that's why it's going to a part-time position. That's what that is. Thank you. 
I second it. Are there any more, other questions? Madam Clerk. Councilors Williams? Yes. Morgan? Yes. West? Yes. Mayor Kirkland? Yes. Resolution, the Council of the City of Chester does resolve that in accordance with the recommendations of the Chester City Planning Commission dated May 11th, 2022, and reviewed by the Delaware County Planning Commission on May 19th, 2022, it does hereby grant final approval to U.S. Supply Company to construct a 2,904 square foot one story storage building located at 1301 Morton Avenue, Chester, PA 19013, as shown on a plan prepared by H. Gilroy Damon Associates, Inc., 1343 Chester Pike, Sharon Hill, PA 19079, dated March 22, 2022. So moved. Second. Are there any questions? Madam Clerk. Councilors Williams? Yes. Morgan? Yes. West? Yes. Mayor Kirkland. Yes. Resolution. The Council of the City of Chester does resolve that in accordance with the recommendations of the Chester City Planning Commission dated October 12th, 2022, and reviewed by the Delaware County Planning Commission on October 20th, 2022, it does hereby grant final approval to Michael Gilhall Sr., American Wood Design, to reverse subdivide 11 lots into one lot and construct a 14,265 square foot warehouse with adjacent parking at 406 to 424 West 2nd Street, Chester, PA 19013, as shown on a plan prepared by Catania Engineering Associates, Inc., 520 West McDade Boulevard, Millmount Park, PA 19033, dated August 17th, 2022. So moved. Second. Are there any questions? Madam Clerk. Councilors Williams? Yes. Morgan? Yes. West? Yes. Mayor Kirkland? Yes. Resolution. The Council of the City of Chester does resolve that it does hereby ratify the submission of an application to the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency, PCCD, for the COVID CFR Local Law Enforcement Support Grant for the sum of $2,942,427, which will be used for the purchase of modern techn technological, technological hardware to ensure that personnel has the means to protect themselves and properly investigate criminal acts for the benefit of the city and its residents. Further, that it does hereby ratify the execution of all documents necessary for the submission of said grant application for and on behalf of the city of Chester. So moved. A second. Are there any questions? Madam Clerk. Councilors Williams? Yes. Morgan? Yes. West? Yes. Mayor Kirkland? Yes. Resolution. Whereas the Stormwater Authority of the city of Chester, here and after referred to as SWA, is proposing to construct a regional stormwater management basin at Veterans Memorial Park, located at 7th and Ingle Streets within, within the city of Chester to prevent flooding in the Veterans Memorial Park area and elevate the long time flooding, I'm sorry, alleviate the long time flooding problem for residents in that area. And whereas the city agrees that flooding is a problem in this area and would like to support the SWA proposed project. Now, therefore, the Council of the City of Chester does resolve that it does hereby approve the development of a stormwater basin and park improvements within Veterans Memorial Park by the Stormwater Authority of the City of Chester, subject to all of the conditions outlined by the city engineer, planner, and solicitor as follows. Number one, the SWA shall comply with all land development requirements and ordinances set forth by the city, county, state, and federal government in the development and construction of the project. <coughs> Number two, the SWA must enter into an easement and or subdivision and land development agreement with the city pursuant to which, number one, the city will grant an easement and or subdivision at the city's discretion 
to SWA for the purpose of constructing and maintaining said basin and all site improvements. The SWA shall conduct a title search of said property to ensure there are no restricting covenants on the property. Number two, SWA will assume the obligation of maintaining the stormwater basin and all improvements and indemnify the city of all risks and liability related to such improvements during construction of the project and for the life of the improvements pursuant to an, to an agreement satisfactory to the solicitor and city. And number three, SWA will add the city as an, as an additional insured both during construction of the project and for the life of the project, an amount that is satisfactory to the solicitor and the city. Number three, it is understood that all improvements that are completed as part of this project will be the sole ownership of, SW, of the SWA in terms of construction, maintenance, and repairs. Furthermore, the city of Chester is not accepting dedication of any improvements, which will be further defined once an easement slash subdivision plan is recorded. Any easement subdivision areas shall be clearly delineated in the field and a means acceptable to the city to define maintenance obligations and all costs to be borne by SWA. Number four, the SWA shall move said basin and improvements to the southwest of the suggested location in accordance with the needed land space east of the improvements for future development. Number five, that pursuant to section 921.02 of the codified ordinances of the city of Chester, said land shall be laid out, improved, and maintained forever as a public park for the use, benefit, and enjoyment of the inhabitants of the city and that the land is subject to the public trust tiddling and disposition law, 53 PS section 3381, the public trust law. Number six, the SWA shall obtain all necessary building, road opening, sidewalk and curb permits from the city of Chester, public works department, county and state. Number seven, SWA shall pay all costs incurred by it or the city in conjunction with the development of the basin, including but not limited to legal, planning, engineering, and inspection and expenses, review of construction plans and documents, title searches, subdivision and land and development fees, and any and all other costs, fees, expenses, pertaining to the development, construction, and maintenance of the basin. So move. Second. Are there any questions? I have one. Um, on, at deliberative on Monday, unfortunately I wasn't here, as I mentioned before, but were there, I know there were some questions, comments, and or concerns. Did all members of council raise any questions, comments, or concerns just to speak up uh, regarding at the deliberative? On yes. Monday? Everyone. And they were addressed. Okay. I don't think everyone did. Well, everyone did not. No. Everyone did not. Okay. Okay. But questions were asked and answers were provided, but not everybody spoke up from as far as members of council. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you, Councilman. Um, I just want to say this. Um, <laughs> these are these um, regulations are or, or desires that have been put forth. The Stormwater Authority has been doing this, this since the inception, since their very inception. And so now we are putting these rules and regulations in place, something they already been doing. Uh, and I appreciate the work that they do and continue to do. And we look forward to this being an addition to our community and to our park and, and, and making our parks and our waterways safer here in the city of Chester. And we will make sure that any authority that comes before this council will have to go through the same thing. 
these same rules and these same regulations. Guaranteed. Call the roll. Call the vote. Councilors Williams. Yes. Morgan. Yes. West. Yes. Bain. Mayor Kirkland. Yes. Resolution. The Council of the City of Chester does resolve that it does hereby approve the First Amendment to the scope of work included in the Master Services Agreement between the City of Chester and Protivity Government Services, Inc., amending Section 3 entitled Name of Project, Audit Readiness Support, and Additional Accounting Resource Support by providing additional personnel and services until March 31st, 2023, as further outlined in the amended dated September 28, 2022. Further, that it does hereby ratify the execution of said amendment for the engagement of services for and on behalf of the city. So moved. I second. Are there any questions? Madam Clerk. Councilors Williams? Yes. Morgan? Yes. West? Yes. Mayor Kirkland? Yes. Resolution, the Council of the City of Chester does resolve that it does approve and order payment of a series of bills and refunds as prepared by the Department of Accounts and Finance and is shown on expenditure approval list for the period of October 8th, 2022 through October 22nd, 2022, attached hereto and made a part hereof, subject to approval from the Department of Accounts and Finance. So moved. A second. Are there any questions? Madam Clerk. Councilors Williams? Yes. Morgan? Yes. West? Yes. Mayor Kirkland? Yes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You're welcome. At this time, we'll have um, our COVID update. Ms. King? Or Ms. King and... Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The Pennsylvania... Excuse me. The Pennsylvania Department of Health reports that there have been 86 positive COVID-19 cases in October so far in Chester. <clears throat> Research experts believe that the number of positive cases is undercounted given the common use of at-home tests. The CDC also reported 25 cases of monkeypox in the state of Pennsylvania since the last council meeting on October 12th. Delaware County is also currently experiencing a medium level of COVID-19 transmission. According to the CDC, people may choose to mask at any time. Those at high risk for severe illness, those with symptoms, a positive test, or exposure to someone with COVID-19 should continue wearing a mask. As of October 14th, the Delaware County Health Department started offering the Novavax vaccine. Novavax is a good option for anyone who has felt reluctant to be vaccinated using Pfizer or Moderna. While the technology used for Pfizer and Moderna has been proven to be safe and effective, the technology used for Novavax is a more traditional and protein-based vaccine. COVID-19 vaccinations and boosters will be available on November 7th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Delaware County Health Center located at 151 West 5th Street. Walk-ins are offered, but you are encouraged to schedule an appointment by calling 484-276-2100. You can also always go to vaccines.gov for the most up-to-date appointment availability for vaccines and boosters. The Chester City Health Department attended the Lead Poisoning Prevention Coalition meeting at Widener University on October 25th. Along with the Delaware County Health Department and the Pennsylvania Department of Health. Also, Keystone First will be having a vaccine and booster shot clinic on October 28th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
at 1929 West 9th Street. To make an appointment, you can call 484-276-2100. On November 10th, the Health Department will be partnering with the Department of Parks and Recreation to host a Veterans Day luncheon at Chester City Hall in the Chester City Hall community room from 12 to 3. Lastly, if anyone needs COVID-19 test kits, they are available on the tables downstairs. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kane. Mm -hmm. And we wanna make sure that we hope that folks are still uh, taking care of themselves, making sure that they get their vaccine vaccinations and their boosters. Uh, COVID is still here with us. We're doing better, but we can do better. So thank you, Ms. King, and thank you, Ms. Carter. Ms. Beaver. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my complaint is dumping grounds on Sadiq property now. It's, the, it's happening during after hours, during nighttime. People, was, I had two pictures this morning. They put in mattress, sofas, love seats, and everything out on his property. One is behind the bus stop on 9th and Butler, and the mattress and stuff is inside the dumpster area where he used to have. And I did reach out to him, and I did give him Councilman West's number, but she said she hasn't heard from him, so something needs to be done. There's too many mice and rats and stuff in the area. Carla, when you and I talked um, a couple months ago, and I the guys went up, at that time, he didn't have a dumpster. Right. And, yeah. and he did get a dumpster? No. Actually, he said he this is not gone. open right now. He's not open back up until March. Okay. So they're using his property as a dumping ground. Okay. So that's illegal dumping. I'll talk to my staff about that mm -hmm. and get also with um, L&I. I mean, because I have cameras and my right. cameras is not picking up. Yeah. Who's, who's doing it? Because it's happening late nights. Okay. 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 All Thank right. You. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Peter. You're welcome. Um, Ms. Mayfield. Good morning. Um, I have a couple of issues, but before I start, I just want to say something. Um, coming here and witnessing, you know, some of the comments that people make to council, and these are concerns of residents. And, you know, a huge observation that I've made is that many times when people are at the podium speaking, you have... Um, city employees that are sitting in the audience that are making comments. And I think that it is absolutely disrespectful. And I think that irregardless of whether or not you like what is said, that as a city employee, you should have a certain amount of respect for residents when they come here to address council. So I would request that that really stops um, everybody should be treated with respect. Um, and that's what I wanted to say on that. And as far as the local elected officials, mayor and city council members, I think that one thing that residents have to understand it, the city of Chester is a business. Everything you do should be for the well-being of the residents and the governance of policies and things that 
help and improve our lives. And I think it should be done with, you know, a certain amount of expertise, a certain amount of always having the residents' issues in the forefront. And I think that recently, you know, I don't know when it happened, but <clears throat> there have been some issues with money. Um, and I just want to ask, you know, a little while ago, there was a subject of maybe a fine that the IRS was going to levy against the residents of the city of Chester because the government has no money. All the money they get, it comes from the residents. And I haven't heard anything about this for months and months now uh, that we could potentially be hit with a $750,000 fine. Council is not talking about it. Recently, it was in the paper that there is a $400,000 payment that was made and council has not addressed it. I think that the residents need to know how that, how that happened who authorized it because I know certain levels of payable have different levels of authorization. And how could a payment of $400,000 go out and go to the wrong place? You know, I, I, I just had been working in accounts and doing accounts payable and having an accounting background. I, I can't conceive it. But I think at the very least, council needs to address it for the residents. There's been no conversation as to where the city stands, the local elected officials, what they are doing to stave off a of bankruptcy, and or how do you guide the residents if the city goes bankrupt? There is no conversation on that. And I think that it is. Thank you, Ms. Mayfield. We, we can address that right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, there is a three minute limit, so. Oh, I'm, I'm, I was waiting for a response. So we'll, we'll address that right now. Um, so on the IRS issue, um, you're accurate. We, uh, I think, put this information out uh, sometime last year, about March or April, uh, that the city of Chester has a, uh, a liability, a financial liability with the IRS of roughly about $700,000. Majority of that is due to penalties and interest. Um, there are some filings that were I guess uh, that were there were things filed uh, with the IRS, but the the data that was filed was not matching up uh, to what was being reported um, as far as payroll um, in the years uh, between like 2016 and 2018 and or 2016 and 2019. So um, we currently are working um, with the IRS and with the internal team financially to uh, rectify the situation. Uh, one of the resolutions on the agenda today was an extension of financial support with Protivity. Uh, Protivity is an agency that's in here that has brought in some um, accountants, uh, offered a little, some more man and woman power to the finance department so that we can become current uh, with, not just with our financial audits, but also so that we can rectify this IRS issue. So uh, we have until uh, roughly about the, the end of the first quarter of 2023 uh, to, to rectify the issue. And we are progressing and doing so in that. Uh, as far as the phishing email, this is our first council meeting since uh, the press release was released. Uh, so we really haven't had uh, an opportunity outside of today and the MFRAG meeting, which was yesterday, to, to try to address it. Um, there was an issue, as many of us know, that these scammers or uh, phishing emails and things like that, that happens, whether it's via email, phone call, or text messages are real. Unfortunately, we were uh, a victim of that. Um, I as well was on those emails uh, as they were as they were coming in uh, for us to submit wires to uh, individuals posing as our insurance carrier for workers' compensation, and of course everything looked very identical. Uh, everything was very typical and usual as far as our broker uh, reaching out to the city of Chester and the finance department uh, requesting for payment. So uh, we actually have a meeting today uh, with the uh, receiver and their team to discuss it a little bit more in depth. Uh, the finance department team has met. Uh, over the last uh, few hours and days uh, to discuss the issue and to look at the next steps of what we're going to do to make sure that we avoid and or limit these types of things that are happening. 
Um, just to so you know, a few things that we are going to do is, of course, in, look at our internal internal controls and some different parameters around that about how wires go out, how transfers are happening, and about money that's incoming and outgoing. Uh, we'll, go, we'll be speaking with the bank as well. Um, and we'll also make sure we have the proper policies uh, in place so that if this does happen in the future, such as a cyber policy, that we hopefully can uh, be able to put claims uh, against that policy. So there are a few things that we're looking at. Uh, again, I think that we are moving in the right direction to, to avoid and limit this, but I do know that this is happening all across the country. And unfortunately, some of this is in our right in our backyard as well. So, um, yeah. Can, can we, uh, let's see. And as, uh, thank you. And as far as um, uh, our employees and being respectful or making comments when others are speaking, um, respect goes both ways. There are times when other persons, I, myself and counsel, may be speaking and other persons may be making comments as well. So let us be reminded that respect goes both ways. And finally, we want to make sure that um, we can help our budget and build our build our budget here at the city. And so we're going to be looking at those persons who have been delinquent in their taxes, especially when the seniors have been paying their taxes on a regular basis. We want to we're going to start a deeper dive into those individuals who claim that property here in the city and who have been delinquent on their taxes. Um, and we're going to find out why they're delinquent on their taxes. And we're going to start talking about that as well. Thank you, Dr. Strand. Mayor and Council, on behalf of the Justice Stormwater Advisory, I just would like to thank the city. Dr. Strand, could you speak more into the microphone? Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. On behalf of the Stormwater Advisory City of Chester, we'd like to Thank the mayor and council for the support you've given and the work that we are set out to do to uh, be diligent with the assignment that was given to us over six years ago by mayor and council. When the federal government has put out a mandate that all communities close to waterways come up with a comprehensive plan to deal with the flooding and reduce uh, the poison that go into the Delaware River you established the Stormwater Authority in the city of Chester. And uh, for the past six years, we've been working diligently to do what we've been mandated to do in a neighborhood of almost $50 million, which has been put into the streets of Chester to deal with uh, antiquated systems, inlets that were caving in, and uh, to divert some of the water away from the combined sewer system, and to reduce the the, the tragic situation that some of our residents have been dealing with for a number of years. I'm thankful for the engineers that have been working with us and also for some of our staff and our Chester residents that have been employed here on a daily basis uh, with back comms, with uh, street sweeping. Uh, we just purchased a new street, street sweeper to uh, add to the one that we already have because we found that keeping the streets clean is essential to stormwater management. If you look on 291, you will see 291 has been remarkably uh, clean on a daily basis. When people come in and out of Chester, they come into a thoroughway that is uh, clean. Um, the day I have with me uh, some of our employees, but also I have about six apprentices that the Stormwater Authority has uh, supported to train in job readiness and also green infrastructure and learn about the, are our apprentices here? Could, could they stand please? I want, just want the mayor to see, these are young people, mayor, that, that the residents of this city is providing uh, income to on a daily basis. They work less than 30 hours a week. Uh, they make $450 a week and they're being trained for job readiness and uh, some of them are going to be in demand positions once uh, they have completed their tests at the end about December. Uh, this has been supported solely by the Stormwater Authority and some other initiatives, but mainly uh, the Stormwater Authority, as it has committed to uh, reach out to our community and to help our youth. So I just wanted you to meet some of them. Mr. 
Dr. Uh, Holden is one of the field representatives who worked with them directly along with a few other members of our staff. <coughs> and um, I just want the mayor to know that. And so we thank you, mayor and council, uh, because we have some flyers that we put out that cover some of the work that's been done already in the city of Chester. And uh, we're here to serve the city and we, we serve at the request and direction of the mayor and council who has established his authority. And we're appreciative for all the help that we've gotten from the federal government and the state. And uh, we thank God for the help, even from the, uh, the, the other entities that are working with us, Corbius and HDR. And um, we we're thankful even for the receiver's office who we've been in contact with, who has a clear understanding of the work that we're doing. And uh, I think that this is something that the mayor and council should be proud of because you established this authority and you entrusted us to do this job. And we're doing it uh, at your uh, direction. And, and, and we hope that uh, you're proud of what you have accomplished. In the midst of all the other things, we can say Chester's clean. Uh, the job that we're going to be doing in Memorial Park will provide almost 50 jobs for Chester residents for two years at uh, sustainable wages, union jobs. We work closely with our contractors, work closely with our local union. Doc, Dr. Strange. Yes, sir. I don't want Time's up. Yes, sir. I don't. Okay. Now, all right. Thank you, Mayor, for this time. But I just want you to know that, you know, we're here to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Councilwoman, do you have any comments? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'd like to uh, make just an announcement to all, all the family dwelling owner, property owners that own property here in the city of Chester. Your inspections are due. And we need you to call in, get an appointment, and get your property inspected because right now they're out of compliance. Thank you very much and have a great day. Councilwoman. Um, again, I just like um, the community to be mindful of your recycling. Um, we, we need to be diligent when we're recycling. And I see more and more as I ride around the city that people are adhering to um, the recycling efforts here in the city of Chester. Um, I'd like to thank the um, um, mayor and council for your support as we, uh, from the uh, police perspective, um, as we go about through the city to look at those um, illegal dump sites. Uh, I've you know, solicited support from the police and my staff in the streets department. Uh, Mr. Um, Alexander, Mr. Robertson, and our staff, I'd just like to thank you for your diligence as we go about to try to clean up the city. It's not perfect because my staff can go in and clean one night, and the very next day, there's trash out again in that very same place. So I'm asking the residents, too, just like Miss Beaver, you know, to be diligent. Let us know when you see things. And then if you see someone illegally dumping, I'm not asking you to go out and approach those perpetrators, but I'm asking you if you get, get a color and make a model of the car, if you can get a, a, a license plate without putting yourself in danger, I would appreciate it. So we could turn it over to our commissioner Gretzky. We need to do this together. We all need to work together to keep our city clean. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councilwoman. Council. Um, really quick update, just two. Um, first off, uh, I just want to give a shout out to all of the, uh, I guess, the classes and alumni for the Chester High, uh, High School homecoming this past weekend. Um, it's always a phenomenal, phenomenal outing jam-packed parking lot. Uh, it's a big family reunion for the city of Chester. So um, I did not go to Chester High, but I think most of you know I still represent C-Pride to the fullest. So 
Uh, but it was also it was it was phenomenal to be out there and uh, the football team won. So continue to support those young student athletes. Um, I think they got one more regular season game left, I believe, and then they're headed to the playoffs. They need your everybody support in the city of Chester. So uh, don't just show up for homecoming. Make sure that you all continue to go out there and support. Pay your pay your admissions at the at the front gate. Don't try to hop the fence. Um, and of course, make sure you buy some uh, some food at the concession stands because it all goes back to those those uh, student athletes. Um, American Rescue Plan. Uh, we had a meeting about a week or two ago about the with the American Rescue Plan. We're going to continue to try to provide some updates. Uh, one thing that we are going to do to bring the community uh, more involved with what we are doing as far as the spending and the projects that we have going on is uh, we'll be uh, we're establishing a uh, uh, oversight committee. Um, that will consist of some of the members uh, from the community. So if you have any interest of being on that oversight committee, uh, please reach out to Michael Hurst uh, via email at mhurst, that's M-H-U-R-S-T, at chestercity.com. Uh, let him know of your interest and he will uh, respond with an email and, and some documentation that may need to be filled out. So again, reach out to Michael Hurst um, if you have interest of joining the oversight committee. And you can also Stay up to date uh, with things that we have going on with the American Rescue Plan on our website at ChesterCity.com. Yes, Thank you, Councilman. Um, Commish, you want to talk about trunk or treat? First thing I'll address is the comment by uh, Ms. Deaver. As Councilman West says, this is a team effort. Um, police does one side. Public works. Um, you know, many people have my personal cell phone number. But like I said, we will work on this. I will get with the patrol division. We're going to put hourly hour checks out there. You know how to get a hold of me. You know that. Um, also, Sunday, trunk or treat. This is the fifth year I'll be doing it. Um, it's more than a trunk or treat. We got moon bounces. We got water ice. I got a DJ. Please spread the word and bring everyone out. Transparency. Come out. Meet my officers from the police department and let's have a good time. We'll be there. I hope so. <laughs> Oh, police station. I'm sorry. It's on our social media, 160 uh, East 7th Street. We use the side of the uh, field there, and then we're going to block uh, 7th Street for temporary. But each year it gets bigger and bigger, so please come out and support. Thank you. Um, I also like to thank um, Mayor and Commissioner Gretzky and our partners, um, Jack Stolsteimer, Josh Shapiro, Mary Kay Scanlon, those who have participated in reducing the crime in Chester. It is much more comfortable here in the city of Chester than it had been. And our crime rate is down. So I think that's commendable. I want to thank you as a resident and a member of this team. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, let me just back up just a little bit and, and address the question about bankruptcy. Um, I know bankruptcy has been placed on the table uh, a number of times uh, by the receiver. Um, keeps mentioning the possibility of bankruptcy. Uh, I do want you to understand something. We went to court, city went to court, and we would not say or do anything until the courts made a decision. The courts found that the city owns owns the Chester Water Authority. Now, it continues to be in court. If we have such an asset in our community that is worth approximately a half a billion dollars, if your house is on fire and the fire company is next door to your house, and it does not put the water on your house, your house burns down. We have a half billion dollar asset here in this community. And we have the right, we will have the right as we go through courts. If it means selling the water authority to save our community and our people, so be it. I want to make sure there's a future for your grandkids and your great grandkids and your great great grandkids as well as mine. So 
That's the answer to that. And then what you do with that money is you make sure that money is used properly. You don't go out and just say, here, we have a half billion dollars. Let's go spend, 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 spend. No, you make sure you invest properly. You make sure you save properly. You make sure you spend properly. You put proper persons in place to make sure that that money lasts generation after generation. You don't just willy-nilly go out there and spend that money. So that's my answer to that. Um, I do want to say to Stormwater, thank you for the partnership. You know, I, I remember when we first, when it was first came about, the Stormwater Authority first came about, everybody ridiculed, and said this and that, and they had to pay a bill. But you see these young men and ladies from this community working on your behalf every day. You see them out there making sure that debris, we talk about debris, that has been thrown down and discarded. Once again, we don't have a KFC, but KFC boxes end up in Chester. We don't have a Wendy's, but once again, Wendy's, Chick-fil-A, all these boxes end up in Chester and they end up in our gutters, in our drains. And these people are the ones that go out there in the rain and the sun and the cold and the heat to clean up after probably grown folk. They do it. And they try to make it so that there's no flooding in our community. And I want to applaud you for the work that you do each and every day. You're out there, you're visible, and you're working. And we thank you. And you're Chester. You're Chester. <laughs> as far as the, the um, project in the um, park, I'm excited. We've been working on this for over two years over two years. Myself and members of this council even went out to Philadelphia. We were invited by Reverend Strand and, other, and the engineers to go to Philadelphia to see one of these basins, to see how it was, what it did in Philadelphia. And, and they're all around, they're all around Pennsylvania. That's the bottom line. And we had these conversations uh, with the executive director and with the engineer. We said, we need you to shrink it a little bit. We need you to do this. We need you to modify it a little bit. And they did everything that we asked of them. We need to make sure that we're not liable if anything happens that, and they did everything. Even answer questions like, you know, what if a child gets in there and, you know, there's a tragedy? Guess what? We have a pool right across the street. We have a pool right across the street that when it closes, we gotta hope and pray that no children get in that pool in the summertime. So I'm excited about it. Um, there were some questions raised and I wanna ask, answer those to, to, to wanna clarify some things because someone asked, it was talking about the lake. It is not a lake. It is not a lake. This is not a lake. It is a stormwater basin and these are found, like I said before, throughout uh, PA to help alleviate flooding. I'm talking to Reverend Strand, I'm talking to the executive board because I hope that we can go to Upper Darby. They have serious flooding there. And I'm gonna have a conversation with the mayor and try to see how we can establish and help them in Upper Darby. I'm sorry, is Darby? Darby, I'm sorry. They have serious flooding problem, a very serious flooding problem, and we want to see how we can help. Um, this does not eliminate the use of our softball fields. Someone said it eliminates the use of, no, it doesn't. We sat down, we saw the drawings, all of us. We saw the drawings, we talked to the uh, engineer. Matter of fact, nobody used the softball fields last year. Nobody. What my hope is, is that, and I'm gonna be leaning on Reverend Strand and, and the Stormwater Authority, is that maybe we can 
convince them to help us beautify those softball fields so that they would uh, match up with the uh, the basin. We'll be talking, Reverend Strand. <laughs> um, the stormwater basin minimizes the flooding in the area, in the businesses, the homes. I don't know if you know it, but those homes in on, on Bradley Street and on the other side of Bradley Street, Engel Street, their basements slant. They slant. So when those storm waters come from the township down Engel Street, they rush not only in the park, but they rush into the basements of, of, of these homeowners. That storm water rushes from the park all, all the way into to, uh, Joe, uh, Joe's Plumbing. Joe's Plumbing has been here forever. And it goes down the street into that automotive uh, dealer, right down the street on 4th Street. This will help eliminate some of that by having this uh, stormwater basin in place. We're trying to make life better for those residents and all of our residents in the city. Someone has said, you know, we don't need it. Uh, if, if you leave it as is, I've walked past that part, past that part and seen after a rain, heavy rain, it's enough water in there for a child to drown. It's enough water in there for a child to drown. So having this in place helps for the safety of our kids and it helps alleviate some of the flooding, most of the flooding in that area for our homes and our businesses. Um, and also our library. Our library gets flooded because of those heavy rains. We need this, this stormwater basin. We desperately need the stormwater basin. Um, $10 million. Not taxpayers, not our taxpayers, city taxpayers' money. $10 million. A grant that they went after. And that's what folks do. They try to get these grants from the state and federal government so that we can do great things here. $10 million for Chester. That's awesome to help us alleviate a problem. Just like, just like 55 million. I'm telling you, folks are investing in this community because this community is getting a whole lot better. And I won't sit here and, and, let, and tolerate folks coming in and saying, uh, this chest of that, it's getting a whole lot better because no one would invest $55 million of their own money into a community that's going downhill. $55 million of their own money, the Philadelphia Union, which means they're here to stay in the city of Chester. Finally, there was a young lady Wow, I can't remember her name. She had a, um, and, and, and this is why I'm saying this, because if, if we don't take advantage of that $55 million, that's our fault. It's your fault, my fault. There was a young lady, Cheryl. Cheryl. Cheryl had a restaurant right here. Used to go to Cheryl's restaurant, get Cheryl's chicken. Little teeny restaurant right there. And when Philadelphia Union opened up and, and <laughs> made an offer and, and encouraged our folks to go down there, Cheryl took the challenge. Cheryl made it. Now she has a huge operation in the Philadelphia Union and beyond in Delaware. Why? Because she's from Chester and she took the challenge. I dare you. I dare you to take the challenge. I dare you to look at that $55 million and say, what type of talents do I have? so that I can be a part of this rebirth of this community and benefit financially. You need to say what's in it for you. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with benefiting from that type of investment in our community. So I encourage you all to do so. Um, there's a question about duplication. This is the last one, question about duplication. Why didn't we duplicate? Uh, why didn't the stormwater duplicate, uh, do the same thing they did in Air Park that they did in 
that they want to do in Chester Park. Well, I, I think I can say this on behalf of Stonewater. There is no creek that runs past Memorial Park. There, there is, there is my turn. I didn't interrupt you. Okay. There is no creek of that magnitude that runs past Arab Park. I mean, I'm Memorial Park. And so there has to be a different type of mechanism, different type of um, build that goes in place. And so I'm excited. I, but once it is done, the naysayers will see the blessing that has been bestowed upon us because of this project. Thank you. And Councilwoman? I just wanted to bring to your attention, it was brought to my attention last night, that we have a young man in, from Chester. He lives here in Chester. And he was on The Voice. His name is Marcelo Groves. That's G-R-O-O-V-E-S. I don't know, it could be Grooves or Groves, but he's from Chester. I watched a clip last night and um, he got um, accolades from John Legend and um, other people on the panel that are artists in the um, entertainment field. And this young man, after he sang just the two of us and did a wonderful job, he proudly, he couldn't wait to get it out that he was from Chester, Chester, PA. So, Mayor, I think we need to try to locate this young man and bring him in so everybody can meet him. Councilman, we've tried. We, um, our very own Miss Amanda Johnson has reached out to the young man. Okay. Um, Councilman, Morgan, Councilman Morgan and I have had conversation trying to um, figure out how to get him in here. Okay. So we are, we'll, we'll keep on trying to. Okay, uh, I didn't know you knew. Drag him in so we can. I just uh, found out last night, and I, I was very happy. I watch TV every now and then. <laughs> it was Carter on Star Night. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Good morning. I just want to say, I guess many of you already know, that October is Breast Cancer Month. And this is the last uh, Wednesday in the month. And the city does have a billboard up about breast cancer, um, thanks to row fabricators, no cost to Chester, and just trying to spread the message about breast cancer. And I just want to say that um, women of color, 40% of women of color are dying more of breast cancer. So I want to, uh, to share the information with uh, your families and friends about the importance of getting a mammogram once a year. If you don't have insurance, just call my office. I would be more than happy to direct you where you can go and get a free mammogram. So I just wanted to say that's important, 40% are more African women, and some men are dying in comparison to other ethnic groups. That's because, one of the reasons, because we're not going to the doctor. So I wanna encourage you, you may not go to the doctor for breast cancer. You may not go to the doctor because you maybe think you're young, but stick around. You're gonna to have to go to the doctor. But what we're here at the Bureau of Health it's trying to keep people healthy and trying to share with you about the importance of taking care of your health. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Councilwoman. And I also want to thank the council for holding it down while I was down. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, members of council for um, conducting business here in the city. And as always in a professional manner, a respectful manner, thank you. And thank you for your prayers. 